Right, I'm uh, John Ball. I'm a senior product manager at Swaco, the Swaco UK and Ireland. Swaco is a large multinational company. Uh, this year, our turnover exceeded 1.2 billion euros, a fairly sizable organisation headquartered in Austria. I'm, I'm focused on the UK and Ireland, as I said. Um, my portfolio really focuses on adaptive technology strategies and things that includes Scoot Mover and Swaco's own Inflow and Smart AI products, which I'll talk about in a moment. And they're all relevant to bus priority. So this is the situation today, and I'll leave the point here. So central bus priority requests so the Arctic T31 message often used to improve adherence to the timetable. Uh, supported in our UTC traffic management system, which is a very mature product and on the market for 30 years in various iterations. We're moving all of Swaco's systems to something called MyCity, which is a platform for everything, whether it's a um, common database, UTMC type or functionality, um, such as air quality sensors, journey times, variable message signs, flood warning, anything you can think of. But we're also adding to that the UTC and remote monitoring of traffic light controllers, so you get things in one place. We already have that functionality in other countries. We have remote monitoring for the UK protocols, and sometime next year we expect to have Scoot in there as well, which will we'll phase out the old product. But we'll still have support for Arctic central priority messages. And as we get over today, um, those, those messages can trigger Scoot bus priority. They can trigger and move the bus priority, so a central priority request into the UTC can send a control bit to the mover to trigger the virtual mover detector and other strategies, as I've mentioned. Going forward, um, we've been looking a lot at floating vehicle data, um, particularly in conjunction with uh, more modern optimizers, and also as part of some of the work we've been doing in preparation for ITMF bits. So we can prioritize all buses, um, and I think this goes back to one of the earlier slides showing how Mover can work just to detect a single buses. We can't give priority to late buses because you don't know if the bus is late or not. We've spoken to some of the manufacturers of the AI detection. They say they could potentially train it and improve it to read destination boards on buses and figure out what route they are, but they're saying it's technically feasible, financially maybe not so much. They're talking six figure sums and months of development. So. It may happen one day, we don't have that yet. But what you do get by prioritising every single bus is shorter and more reliable journeys, less stops and starts, improved emissions and improvements to congestion. So if you have a double-decker bus, stops on a hill at a traffic light, has to pull away again slowly, all traffic behind it gets held up, you know, knock-on effects. And even as we move towards electric buses, you don't get the tailpipe emissions, there's still a lot of particular emissions from the tyres and roadway and stuff and the bus pulling away particularly with the talk of an electric hybrid bus. So we have classified data from the connected vehicles, by classified, I don't mean secret, I mean tells you what sort of vehicle it is. Um, so from connected vehicles themselves, uh, and there's about 20%, I think, market take up of connected vehicles. That's the data, for example, that, that INRIX used to, to um, give you journey times and speed and things. Uh, they sell that to Tom Tom, uh, Drake Wells, another one basically connected floating vehicle data. So it has its place, it's not 100% coverage yet, it's good for speeds, it's good for journey times, it's no use for flow because you don't know how many vehicles going on a certain road are actually connected, so they're only sort of probe or sample vehicles. So what we've been looking at is filling in the gap from truly connected vehicles to using AI detection to provide data as if it were connected vehicles, either in the um, CAM message format or just anything that gives us position, um, position and speed. Um, you can use the same methods to prioritise other modes of transport as well, so as well as prioritising buses and getting those benefits. You can prioritise HTVs and you get the same benefits on congestion and uh, emissions <coughs> by prioritising HTVs and you can change your priorities and um, look at active travel and so on. Um, Basically, our Inflow product has a um, connected vehicle talking traffic type interface that takes data directly in from detected data directly in as it stands. And we have a product called Smart AI, 
which only uses this type of detection. So inflow can use loops or simulated loops from um, detectors that give you a virtual loop, or it can take true floating vehicle data. So AI detection, typically video or radar. It looks at objects, where they are, what the classification of the vehicle is, how fast it's going, where it is. Doesn't really care about roads, doesn't care about fixed detection points. Uh, can also, the same cameras can be used for counts, and if you've got multiple cameras, you can use them for journey times, because they, they can, for example, do a NPR, take it out for a number plate here, and take it there, and say, okay, journey times, mission across your city, or whatever. So and so, you don't use that for the um, adaptive real time control, it's useful to see how, how things are improving, gives you a good picture of what's going on. So, our, our inflow has it's a distributed optimizer, so like Mover is, sits in the cabinet. Um, there's no central control, adjacent junctions share data between them, they share quite complex data, including planning horizons, and etc. etc which means they work in a coordinated way much, much better than Mover does. And Mover's excellent at optimising a single junction, not so good at coordinating adjacent junctions or networks, because you've simply got um, a bit going from one junction to the next. Whereas Inflow is sharing lots and lots of data, and it uses that also for optimization. So you can say, I've got a bus here, it's going to come through this junction, and it'll be going through that one, and it will prioritise sections of the network, corridors, rather than individual junctions, so that's, that's a benefit. Um, CRTS interfaces, as I mentioned, and it's policy driven. So we have sliders here, which is such a great idea, and our competitors copied it. Um, but you, you can um, set up your sliders with stuff behind them, configuration behind them. And you can say, my policy is give priority to buses, or you can say, my priority policy is stops and delays for everybody, or emissions, or pedestrian wait times. But that can apply at any level within the hierarchy. So it could be your entire city, it could be a particular region, it could be a corridor, it could be a single junction. In any one of those, you can immediately just change the priority and say, I don't think buses should have all the priority here. I think pedestrian wait times are too long. We'll improve it for pedestrians on this particular junction today, and it will happen immediately. Um, you don't have to wait, you can do what ifs, you don't have to turn things off and get a mover for a week and, and look at it. You can, in real time see what's happening. So Smart AI, this is a new product for us. Um, it's in pilot at the moment. There's two or three sites in Denmark, I think, using it. Very, very quick to set up. Well, that's the goal. That's, that's what it will be. So you don't even have to draw a junction. You just basically set up the detection, pointing the right way. Leave it running for a while. It learns where cars are coming from. It says, well, it must be a road you wouldn't get platoons of trucks driving across a field towards me, so it makes its own mind up. So on the right, you have the picture building up. On the left, we have a Visim sort of simulation of that, but it could be real traffic. We, we've got videos of real traffic, we've got videos of simulation, and showing the, the picture build up as it teaches itself where, where the roads are. And it learns that, and it learns to optimise the vehicles, and it can also apply priority, because the detection we're using here is actually smart micro radar which can classify the vehicles so you can put in a, a waiting to say give priority to, to buses or whatever you like. Um, designed to work standalone on a single junction only but because it's AI based um, it tends to coordinate itself so if you've got two junctions next to each other they, they tend to figure out what's coming out of one junction and go to the next they don't talk to each other and they just learn from what's going on that seems to actually be quite surprisingly a good way of coordinating junctions in practice. So, so my city, as well as the traffic control aspects, includes the traditional UTMC things. Um, and like everybody else, BODS is too rich a source of data to ignore, so we've been putting BODS data into my city. So that gives us bus locations in real time, it gives us the routes and it gives us timetables. We're using NAPTAM to position bus stops on the route. And we're analysing journey times between points over time. And what we're focusing on is bus journey times between stops, because that's the bit that's important for buses. The people get on, the people get off, and that's what's important to a passenger. And it doesn't take them to get from here to there, or some random point in, in the middle of the journey. 
And then one of the driver for this is we've been doing bus priority with people and they want to be able to justify the, the piece of funding they've had, for example. Um, so this was the main driver for it. Um, so you can do offline analysis before and after comparisons, etc. Um, but also, because this data is going into my city, one of the things you can use it for is input into strategies. So like most common databases, you have strategies that take virtually any input from data you're consuming and that can trigger any kind of output and stuff you can publish. So it could be messages on BMS signs, it could be something going to a web portal, it could be emails to particular members of staff. Anything you can output, anything you can input can be joined together with a strategy. So it's a quite a powerful tool there. So more than just an offline part of the event thing, you can say, you know, if bus journeys take too long on this route, something so you could have a sign that says to get from here to the city centre would take you five minutes by car, ten minutes to walk and who look would take you eleven minutes on the bus. So more some possibilities there. So we have lists of available bus routes. We have all the bus stops that form a route with their coordinates. And the interesting bit is on the map you can see where the buses are. Um, but in the middle there's a tall tip so I've hovered over the bus in real time, it tells me where the bus is, what route it's on, how fast it's been going. You can hover over the buses, you can hover over the bus stops, you can hover over the route run to what route it is. So, lots of there. It's the early days yet, that's the functionality we have, we're building on that, and we'll continue to sort of incorporate that and with other things, other aspects of the My City. That's it. Short and sweet.